Hi, I've been doing some research lately about attachment theory because it's really so hot right now and different kinds of therapy, watching videos, reading books, and I keep having the same response, which is I really understand how people over time have come up with theories and methodologies because I have. And I, I know where our mind have come from, where things I've experienced as a coach have worked and put those together as a kind of collection and then put a name to the patterns that I see, that I've experienced. And I know that's what's happening and that's how all of these different organized principles have lightly come about and the ones that work the best or the most popular are the ones that you see and hear more of. And yet, I just feel so turned off by it all. Not by my stuff, but turned off by all of the other organizing principles stuff. I've been at this a long time, and for me, it all comes from masculine energy, a desire for order. And for me, what we are all dealing with from the moment of birth, and whether we are eventually or can create for ourselves a way to be happy in this experience, in this reality, or find it an unhappy experience, which is things happen. We have no control over a great many things that happen to us, that happen out in the world, that happen internally with us. Yes, we can spend a lot of energy preventing and and working on things, but that can be kind of the part of the problem, which is how do I control my life? We are living an existence where we do not have control. We don't have daily control over the weather, over what happens to us, what people say to us, and how we respond to this is what our life is like. And so, so many therapies are about how do we accommodate this, especially if we've started out in our life in a difficult way, where with attachment theory, how we could not count on somebody who was taking care of us, where we could not count for getting our needs met, where we could not count on somebody to love us and be there when we needed them. And then as we become adults, well, we have the same experience. We don't trust anybody because we've never really had the experience of being able to trust someone. So we're all sort of in the same boat, except those of us who've had really wretched experiences as children have it really hard because we do not know what it was like to be any way other than the way we feel, other than the way we've experienced. So that's what all therapy is about, helping you find a new perspective, a new way of being. So let's just talk about being a siren simple. Rather than I have this attachment, I am avoidant, I am disorganized, I am ambivalent, I am anxious. How about I'm just a siren? I have everything I need to be extraordinarily happy in this world because I am alive. I am here. I have whatever level of movement I have, whatever level of intelligence I have, whatever level of understanding I have, I have all of that. And I can mold that and make a sculpture of that as happy, or I can make it as unhappy. And as we know, happiness feeds itself. You get happier. The more you feel happy, the happier you feel. The more you feel unhappy, the unhappier you feel. You see all the glitches, you see all the flaws, you see all the traps and all the dangers. When you're happy, you tend to just kind of not see those and you see the, oh, there's a bright light there, oh, there's a guy who likes me. You see and perceive based often on the way you have decided to take in your experience. So all of therapy is about realigning all of that in a way that will get you more and get you what you want. So for me, there are themes that are consistent across all platforms. One, mindfulness. You've heard of that so much. 
Well, it's kind of a, a boring concept. It's been around so long. It comes from meditation. It comes from an ancient practice. It comes from simply noticing what's going on. You notice not what's happening out there so much as what I'm feeling. I notice what I just said, what I just did. I am noticing me. That is mindfulness. And at the same time, I'm noticing what that bug is doing because noticing what that bug is doing is helping me notice what I'm doing and what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. So I call this the catch. It's my first love forever tool. I call this the catch. It's an awareness of yourself. And then the trick is to be non-judgmental about what you find, which is something really unique, unusual, and Therapy can be about that. We can call that acceptance. I call it radical accepting. But mostly, I call it falling in love with it. So if you fall in love with your anger and your righteousness and your upset and your pain, literal pain, and I know, for example, uh, how terrifying it can be in an experience where you feel helpless and out of control, Fall in love with that moment is not an easy thing, and I'm not saying that it is. And physical pain, we've all been through moments of that. Some people have it chronically. I've certainly experienced that. I'll bet you have too. And feeling happy and alive and aware and in love with that is not an easy thing for me to ask. And yet, those are kind of across the board the way to get what you want those three things to start with. And I'll put names to those in other videos. I call them agility, ability to move around. But falling in love with it, awareness, the catch, let's just try those things. Make lists if you want to. Make little notes on your phone. Draw pictures of things you notice about what you say and what you do when a man triggers you or somebody else triggers you or a boss triggers you or the weather tr triggers you. Those are the kinds of things that we can start with here. And then we'll talk about how it works with what kind of an attachment man you want to be looking for. How you can find a securely attached man, or how you can find a man who is anxiously or avoidantly attached or disorganized attached, who yet is open to becoming more, to becoming more secure with you.